Hey everybody, I'm here today with Jerry Brennan from Cloud Booking. He's the CEO and founder. Jerry, thank you very much for speaking to me today. Um, can you introduce yourself to everyone? Tell us a little bit about yourself and about Cloud Booking. Hi Lloyd, it's a pleasure and thanks for inviting me on. Really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're a, a, a company that trades in both the public sector and the private sector. Uh, we've grown uh, dramatically over the last sort of five years or so. Um, essentially what we do is, is we provide um, online hosted software that, that allows organizations of all shapes and sizes to make better and more efficient use of the space they provide to their staff. So it's things like meeting rooms, hot desks, car park spaces, visitors, that kind of thing. That's in essence what, what we do as a business. Yeah, and that's really, really interesting, Joe. Thank you for the, for the intro. And I think yeah, with everything that's happened with COVID, those sorts of technologies that kind of utilize space really effectively must, you know, must be more important now than ever. And, yeah. and something I should have mentioned from the outset, kind of um, kudos to Cloud Booking in terms of their position on the Tussle Tech 200. You guys had um, over 100% growth over the last financial period. So clearly what you're doing is, is working. So congrats on that. And, and Thanks, another, another reason why we, we, we had you on today is, is, is clearly you've had success in this space. So yeah. we, we wanted to talk around um, building strong relationships uh, and how that helps to, to win more deals in, in the public sector. So let me get, get cracking with asking you some questions and, and kind of plugging into some of that expertise. So um, Joe, to start off with, um, when selling to the public sector, um, what do you think the benefits are of having strong relationships in the first place? I think I think it's 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 I guess it's it's a similar thing, you know, no matter what the the client, whether they're public or private sector. But essentially, I think you you have to acknowledge that when things go wrong, because they do, right? No system is is infallible and is perfect. Um, you have to have a firm foundation from which to fix those kinds of issues, you know. So. It, it really means that you've, you've got to build a strong relationship with a client from the start. So you're always working together. And, and we've got, at Cloud Booking, we've got a 96% client retention rate, you know, throughout the life of our business. And that, that, that's amazing. You know, I'm really, really proud of that. And it does suggest that we do build those long lasting relationships with clients by being open and honest and being collaborative and listening and, you know, and trying to learn all the time. And that's a thing that I want to keep coming back to the, 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 the importance of learning from, from the things you get right and wrong in the public sector. But I think a, a, a strong relationship, it, it gives you, you know, kind of, um, if you understand your customers' needs in, in a change in landscape, like, like what's happening now, you know, post-COVID, we're all, we're all trying to figure this out together. No, no one's got all the answers. You know, I guess we've got more expertise than most because we've got the technology to, 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 to try and show people how to, how to change. Um, but it's particularly difficult for organizations with lots of staff, which, of course, most public sector employers have. So it's this idea of, you know, a lot, trying to get a lot of people to, to change the way they work. What we've seen in the private sector is that lots of companies have, have reduced their real estate by anything up to 60%. You know, they're not reducing the number of people. They're just expecting people to work in a different way. And although the public sector might not be divesting themselves of the same amount of space, they, they are still trying to figure out how to, how to get employees to return to the office in a way that suits everybody. You know, the, work, the world of work has changed, whether we like it or not. And I think it's, it's really important that we have a, a deep understanding of, of, of those uh, requirements of each of those individual organisations and we don't treat them all as one. And I think what you get from those long-term relationships is things like um, case studies, you know, and reviews, that, that kind of thing, where we, as long as we're, we're making sure our clients are happy, we hope that they, they will give testament to that level of satisfaction to future clients. It's, it's kind of really important. So, and I think the case studies that are on our, on our website reflect that. But it's, it's kind of, it's really simple to me, you know, the, the business rule applies, whether it's public, private, you know, whatever. The, 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 the key thing to do is to build something that's useful to people. If you can find a gap that no one else is in, then great. You know, it's, it's rare that anybody does that. But make it work all the time. Fix it fast when it doesn't work. And make sure it keeps advancing and improving all the time so that you stay ahead of your competition. That, that, that's it, really. I think su summarized really nicely. And I think look, there's, there's something in there that it's in the essence of what you said. You didn't necessarily use this word directly, but there's this there's this theme that's coming through in all of these chats that I've had so far really about trust, right? And you're talking yeah. about long-term relationships as a vehicle for trust. 
case really strong case studies that are built out around solving somebody's problem properly and having the case study to back that up and that's kind of that, that's something which we see more so of course it's a factor in private sector as well but in public sector there's something about having this kind of concrete evidence testimonial and the relationship that goes with that that's so important so interesting to hear that that point kind of being being raised being raised again um joe to follow up just uh, the, the next question um so what do you think uh, organizations often get wrong when handling relationships with the public sector i think it's it's a classic mistake that everybody falls into you know we did it for a long time and and, and the first thing we got wrong is that we took a, a like a one-size-fits-all approach you know once we got one client in the nhs for example um, we, we kind of thought they were all the same, and of course they're not. You know, the NHS is just an umbrella organisation that, that that is made up of these completely different organisation organisations. Sorry. So what we try and do is, we, we, with every client we have, we try and listen to that client and, and and understand what it is they're they're trying to achieve with a system like ours. So then I think I think uniquely in our market, what we do is we customise our solution based on that engagement and based on continuous feedback. So I'm a great believer that any proper SaaS business, you should have a system that by the time you get to the renewal of your contract, you know, in three years usually in our case, the system should be more important and more embedded into the client than it was on day one. Otherwise you're kind of doing something wrong. So I think it's important to understand that every organization, you know, whether it's a local authority, NHS, whoever it might be, has a different set of requirements and you have to try and really understand what those requirements are. And as I said, the NHS, great example, it's made up of a series of unique individual organizations and every one of them must be treated in a, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a different way. I think it's also important to try and understand how organizations operate, how they function from a procurement point of view. You know, there's one thing that's always top of the list for any organization in the public sector, and that's information security. So if you aren't 100 percent behind your, your infosec, if you don't have, you know, all of the answers for the IT team, you're not going to get any further. It doesn't matter how good your product is. You're just not going to get past first base. So we've invested, having learned those lessons ourselves, you know, we got our ISO 27001 certification a few years ago now, and we've invested in, a, in a, an information security team. So those guys are always on standby to answer any questions, you know, to offer support to our, our sales and our implementation teams to make sure that they've got all the answers for, for those organizations when those questions are asked. I think that's that's that's. It's so important as well what you're saying about these are individual organisations. Yeah. The last one of these conversations that we had, or one of one of the previous ones we, we did, was all about selling to the NHS. And it's this idea that the NHS is the same. It's like just because all of these organisations are kind of under this umbrella, as you called it, don't think for a second that they think the same way that they they Absolutely. buy they buy in the same way, right? And we talk a lot at Tussle about routes to market. Well, just because one buyers favoring a particular framework or is you know is buying in a certain way don't expect that everybody who's a similar type of, of organization in the public sector will buy the same way because evidently they, they, they don't right so yeah. that's a really it, that's a really interesting point you make about really deeply understand who they are what what's what's driving those decisions and how they're different to you know the local authority or the contracting authority next door who you might you know easily assume is the same but but clearly yeah. they're not no, um, Okay, brilliant. Well, look, uh, ne the next question is all about kind of maintaining. So, how do you how do you um, uh, maintain and improve relationships with uh, um, stakeholders in the public sector, and how do you see that differing to, to private sector? So, what are the kind of main differences there? Okay, it's an interesting question actually because I think it depends on the size of the private client, you know. But even even now, you know, even smaller clients, smaller customers. Have got have got really kind of detailed infosec requirements. Their their approach to IT security is, you know, better than it's ever been. It's usually because of of the the, the effect of what I described in, in in some of my last answers. That that selling to large organisations, you have to be in a in a in a different headspace in terms of your IT security. It's it's vital. So it so it doesn't differ massively with the larger clients. You know, we, we deal with some of the world's largest organizations like Airbus and Experian, Anglo-American, Intuit, you know, all over the world. And, and those guys, as you can imagine, put you under the same level of scrutiny as, as any um, public sector client would. 
So, so I think it's you know it's important that you've you've got to be you've got to be robust. You've got to be set up and ready for scrutiny. You know, for, from from any organisation that that takes infosec and IT security as as important you know as seriously as, as as public sector clients do. But I think in, t- in terms of th- th- there's there's a lot of really important lessons that you, you you have to learn to be successful in the public sector. And I think one of the key differences it's actually I think it's easier to build long term and long strong and long lasting relationships with public sector clients because often there's continuity in staff turnover for example that you don't get in private companies you know you, you tend to deal with the same people for quite a long period of time so as, as long as the relationship is is maintained that that really helps in terms of keeping that contract for a long time you know getting those clients to talk to prospects to tell them about the experience you know and 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 how supported they feel. And I think if, if you've got ambitions to grow, that, that's, it's crucial that you do that. But the, the flip side of that is, is kind of the, the fact that it's, it's, it's difficult to get into the public sector in the first place, right? I'm sure everybody's told you the same thing because nobody in the public sector wants to be first, right? It's just a fact, you know? So, so it, it, it will be really hard for anybody to get their first few clients under their belt but I think once you do, you can, you can, you can, and again, I think there's nothing wrong in, you know, you asking those clients to help support you to win new business. And it may be that you give them more favorable terms, right? Who, who knows? You know, you, you've got to do whatever you have to do to make sure that, that you grow in that sector because it's so worth it. So, you know, that's kind of what we've done is we've, we've tried to get our, our early adopter clients to, to act as referrals to our, 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 our new um, public sector clients. But the lesson, more, more important than anything else, the lesson that, that I, I learned, not, not the hard way because we were kind of geared up to do it, but I learned over and above any other one is that you've got to keep trying. So when, when we lost RFPs, right, when we lost out in the early days, what we would do is go back to the client and ask them why. So, you know, it's, 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 it's inevitable that when you're a small company and you're starting out, you're not going to have all of the, the tools in your armory to meet the requirements of large companies. So, but what you have to do, what's incumbent upon you as any business owner is to learn why you failed and to make sure that you don't make the same mistakes again. So that's kind of what we did. You know, when we released our new product in 2017, we focused a lot on the interface, on the look and feel, Mm. you know, and and probably didn't have, at that time, didn't have as many features um, as we would have liked to because there just wasn't enough time to get them all finished. But, you know, my logic is that if, that if somebody wants to use your interface because they like the way it, it looks, they'll kind of forgive the things that aren't there yet, as long as you deliver them on a, on a roadmap timeline that, that you say you will. And that's certainly what we've done and we've tried to do over the last few years. So if you, if you go in for, for RFPs and you're not successful, ask them why you failed. You know, these, these guys will tell you, they'll, they'll give you the feedback because they want... They want the the uh, landscape to be more diverse. They want more suppliers. They want to be able to draw from, you know, a, a different well than than they're, than they're used to doing. So they're there to to try and you know to, to help you improve. So I, I think it can, the trouble is with that it can kind of take a long time, you know, to to um, to achieve that. But it's but it's worth it. And there there is no other way. You know, once your public sector clients see that you have other public sector clients that are willing to endorse the work you do you find it much, much easier when you get to that stage. That, that, that really resonates with me. The bit about, for, for my you know, background, I've, I've worked in procurement uh, and I've, I've kind of done some bidding as well into the, into the public sector. But from a procurement perspective, you'd be amazed at how few companies really, I'm not on, on about kind of asking for feedback just generally. I'm on about really wanting to understand why didn't we win um. deeply and actually having those conversations in quite a kind of human constructive way. Yeah. Like lots of people get the angry, why didn't we win? And oh, it's, a, you know, this, but, but actually to just say, look, the person running this process is human. They're trying to get something done you didn't win. But actually, if you approach it in the right way, they're actually quite willing to have those conversations with you. Yeah. And if you can get over the kind of, I know a lot of people have this like, you know, it's so price focused or there's some stupid reason we didn't win. Actually, if you can overcome that and really understand well, deeply why didn't we win, then, then, then you can use that as a really powerful tool to help you going forward. As, as, well, as well as what you said, Joe, sorry, to, as well as what you said, the other bit was, which kind of resonates as well, is the foot in the door. The foot yeah. in the door bit is hard and we hear that a lot, right? And then, and then as well as that, um, 
using using these customers as kind of advocates as reference points it, yeah. like, and i can see from, from again from the conversations i've had so far in my own experience how that is such a powerful tool to say it's endorsed by this person already and they're, they're helping do that but that first bit being really tough to just break in right well i'll give you an example right so so i remember we we, we went in for an rfp and I knew we wouldn't win it, but we weren't ready. And it was, it was, you know, it was a, one of the one of the world's largest consulting companies. And what was interesting is that the, the, this is what kind of what started this thought process for me is that the the buyer offered uh, a call. He said, "I want to talk to you because I want to tell you why you lost." So you know, we we took the call gratefully, and the explanation was that this guy said to us that the average age of their employees in that company was twenty six. Right, which was quite depressing. The average age is twenty six, yeah. and he said that in terms of the interface, they they all preferred us. They loved it. They they were they 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 voted for you guys over every other product. The problem we had as an organisation is too small. You're too UK focused. You know, you you didn't have a few of the fe key features that we needed. But the reason I wanted this call is I wanted to tell you to go and build them, and we'll come back the next time we're looking. We'll come back to you guys first. And I'm delighted to say that, that uh, about 12 months ago, we re-engaged with that company and the back end of last year, we won that, that contract. So it just shows if you, even if the relationship isn't, isn't that of client supplier, you know, just, just act as if it's gonna be one day. And, and you know, who knows, your ambitions might be fulfilled. You know, yeah, don't ever I give up. That. I love that, I love that story. That's exactly what people should do more of. And I think there, there's a reluctance to sometimes, which is, yeah. which is a shame. Okay, um, Joe, got a few more for you before I let you go. Um, so let me just ask you a little bit about timing. So if you're, if you're kind of trying to build new relationships with the goal of kind of doing more deals with these people in the future, kind of what's your view on timing? Like are you gonna meet them, try and make the relationship today to sell to them tomorrow or what, what does it what does it look like from your perspective how does timing work i think actually that's a really good question because i, th I think that the, the 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 timing starts when you decide that you your organization is going to try and make uh you know make make inroads into this sector and that could be any sector so what you have to do is understand the clients that you're going after understand what makes them tick and the only way to do that is to get to know them Right. So long, long before they ever become clients, go to events, you know, go to road shows, listen to, you know, to interviews like this, I guess, and, and just try and understand what makes those people tick. And that engagement can be can be years before. I think our sales cycle for large companies is, is at least six months. Usually we've had clients we've engaged with, you know, like the one I described a minute ago. Right. That, that took three years you know, for us to to land. Um, so I think it can be it can be years in the making, but you you have to decide what your strategy is as a business. And if public sector is part of your strategy, you have to accept it will take you time, you know. And it, and it, you have to win people round. And you know, somebody described it to me once. In fact, somebody drew me a picture when I started in business, <laughs> and the picture was of a was of a, a ravine, you know, and, and and a half constructed bridge. And what people have to see is that you continue to build that bridge to get yourself from one side to the other. And then they recognize the bridge and they recognize that, that you, you, you've been around long enough to, to have built the foundations, you know, from which to grow. Mm -hmm. And often, sometimes that, that's all it takes. You know, people say, these guys have been around a while. They know what they're doing, you know, and I, and I, and I feel like there's a, there's a momentum there and there's a, there's a trust I have in that organization. It can take years, but it's, it's the only way. Yeah, I think that's a, a lot. I think a long game approach is the way for public se sector, certainly, even, even when you're selling something as both of our companies are, that's kind of, it's a SaaS style product. It's easy, you know, it's kind of, there's not much friction to kind of the buying and selling process. Still the relationship part takes a long time in the public Absolutely. sector, that trust that is massive. Well, I should add Lloyd that actually we did a, we did a, we did a lot of research as well in the public sector last year. And um, we did a poll and, and the company that, that did the poll ended up becoming a client and buying the cloud booking system themselves. So, who knows? Maybe you guys will do a bit more background <laughs> digging and feel the same way. <laughs> there you go. All right, Jerry, let me, um, conscious of time, so let me ask you to finish off. What are your top tips for bolstering your public sector relationships? If, if, there, was, if there was one or a few things that you'd leave people with after listening to this today, um, what, what would they be? I think there's a few, yeah. And I think, you know, like the most obvious one, right, is get yourself onto the G Cloud. The portal get yourself on the g cloud list and make sure that you renew it 
every year because that was the best time, the best investment in time and effort and money we ever took, right? Because, you know, most of, most of the, our contracts come through that portal. Now, the, the other key thing is that, that, that at the time, you know, the, 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 the expectation was that, well, I don't, it wasn't a great expectation for me. I knew it wouldn't be real, but, but the idea was that you were almost like pre-vetted you know, these companies have been checked by us and they're, and they are, they're, but of course, no organization is, is going to, is going to, is going to avoid the scrutiny and the level of infosec checks they would do because it's, because you're on the G cloud list. You still have to make sure that, you know, you're geared up for that, but getting on G cloud is, I guess, is the most important because otherwise public sector organizations can't find you. So, you know, put, put the time and effort into, into getting that sorted. Um, and I think, as I, as I kind of alluded to throughout my answers, really, you, you have to understand what, what features and services are going to be of value to each client. You know, you have to understand the needs of those clients. And, that, and that's a consultative process. And I think you, you then have to try and construct your, your offer around those needs based on what you find. You know, for some clients, all they want is a simple method of booking a desk so that people can be in the office one, two, three days a week, whatever it might be. We have other clients in the public sector that, that have invested heavily in sensor technology, you know, where we put a ceiling sensor above all the desks so that we can monitor how those desk spaces are used. We can automatically check people in and out of desks, that kind of thing. So they want you know, the, the, the sort of full automated solution. Um, and as I said earlier on, you know, I keep repeating, it's, it's, it's key not to make the mistake of thinking that because you've, you've, you've landed one NHS trust or one local authority or one um, government department that you're going to be able to sell to another one in the same way using the same tactics and actually it cannot often wind them up that you say well we, we dealt with x uh, local authority in you know wherever it may be in this way what's that got to do with me would you say that to airbus if you were dealing with british aerospace i don't think you would because it would probably annoy them um, so i think you have to understand that what, what what works for one organization won't necessarily work for them all that's really important and as i said you know in my answer to my last question it's it's to go to events, get to know these guys, get to know these people. Because as I said, you know, they're, they're, they're often the procurement people and, and the facilities guys, and you know, they're, they're all in these roles for a long time, you know. So if you, if you rub them up the wrong way or you make mistakes, it's often that you're, you're kind of going to find it hard to go back because, you know, you, you need to make allies and you need to make friends. It's really important. So I think it's, it's all those things, really. Get on G Cloud understand that you've got to treat every client individually and get to know people, get build relationships with them before you even start doing business together. You know, it's really important. Great stuff, Jay. Let's some really, really good tips to, to leave everybody with today. And thank you very much for your time. For me, it's been a really insightful chat. Um, great to speak to you. And again, once more, congrats on, the, on your Tech 200 uh, placement last year. Wish you all the success for the future and uh, hopefully we'll speak again soon. Thanks, Lloyd. Really appreciate it. And thanks for the opportunity. All right, bye.